70% of Palestinians support the Hamas attack of October 7th, 15 are somewhere in the middle, and only 15% of Palestinians say they are against it. Now, if you can't get your head around how most Palestinians can support the kidnapping, rape, and murder of women and children, then you have a problem understanding the mindset of the Palestinians and of Muslim society in general. In this video, I will be outlining the main reasons why you have that problem. These numbers showing such enormous support for the Hamas attacks come from an Israeli research institution and of a poll conducted by the University of Birzed. You can accuse this university of many things, but Zionism is not one of them. It is a Palestinian university. When I first saw this poll, I considered making a video about the fact that Hamas is not just a terror organization, but that it does actually represent the Palestinians. And I pictured a thumbnail that would look like this, Hamas equal Palestinians. Think about it. There isn't a single leader or political party in the West that enjoys so much support from its people. And I thought I would talk about the fact that in the media, they differentiate between Hamas and the Palestinians, even though they are basically the same. But there is a far greater issue to play here, and that is you and others like you might be surprised by the fact that a vast majority of Palestinians support the Hamas attacks. If you think the Palestinians support Hamas because of the occupation in 1948 and so on, I just want to say that I won't be talking about history in this video, seeing as I've done this in the last 10 videos. But to anticipate some of the comments that will no doubt be coming from the pro-Palestinians, I will just point out three quick facts. Since 2005, there have been no settlements in Gaza. It is a Jew-free area. The Gaza Strip is not a prison as it has a border with Egypt. The people of Gaza get millions of dollars from the international community, but most of it funds terror. There was a water shortage, so the European Union financed a new water system. That's nice. What a noble thing to do. Hamas dug the water pipes out of the ground to make rockets out of them. Apparently, shooting at Israeli civilians is more important than having clean drinking water. And I remind you, Hamas enjoys the support of 70% of the population. The first reason why you can't comprehend the situation is simple. No one wants to talk about it. How can you understand a problem if hardly anyone wants to address it? We are not comfortable talking about the differences between Muslim society and Western society. In the West, it is almost as if you're not allowed to criticize other cultures anymore. You are limited to say, hmm, I love their food. Talking about food is the new talking about the weather. Words might be coming out of your mouth, but you are not saying anything of any substance. I don't subscribe to this way of thinking. And no, this is not racism. You can criticize all the groups that I belong to. You can criticize me as a man, as a Jew, as a 40-year-old, as someone who lives on a kibbutz, as a father, as a Led Zeppelin fan. Maybe I will agree with you and maybe I won't, but I won't call you racist just because I don't have a good response to your criticism. If almost all Muslim countries, the rich ones, the poor ones, those in Africa, those in Asia, are not democratic and have no human rights, then it says something about their society. This is no coincidence. And to claim otherwise is both naive and dangerous. This is a reality that has to be addressed. The second reason is the idea that everything is relative, that there is no right or wrong, no truth or lie. It is all subjective. I find this approach not only dangerous, but also stupid and easy to debunk. Yes, there is a gray area, but there are also basic truths. If you don't know what you stand for and what your basic values are, then you have some homework to do. If you think that everything is subjective, 
how can you say that you support women's rights? In some Muslim countries, men are allowed to beat their wives. Every year, dozens of Muslim women are murdered in Europe um, by their family members in so-called honor killings. I, I hate this term, honor killing. So do you accept that as a multicultural person or do you do the right thing and condemn it? If there is no right and wrong, what would you say about Nazism? Do you accept that as part of diversity too? The third reason why you might have trouble understanding the Palestinians is that Muslim society is extremely religious and European society is deeply secular. I think Western Europeans have a harder time understanding Muslim society because religion has no part to play in their domestic politics, no part at all. In the U.S. it is different. Even the Democratic senators say God bless America. And for some Republicans, the Bible and Jesus are part of their political identity. Western Europe is very secular and religion is a personal thing you practice at home. I've seen some of the horrific videos of the Hamas attack of October 7th. And one thing that is very clear is that the terrorists shout out Allah Akbar as they murder people. They don't only do that when attacking Jews. They also do it in other wars when they are killing other Muslims. This idea of praising the Lord as you kill other people is not something we come across in Jewish or Christian or Hindu cultures. All the Muslim organizations you hear about, the Muslim Brothers, Al-Qaeda, Islamic State, Hezbollah, the Taliban, they are all religious Muslim organizations. They are not national movements. The West think that the world is divided into countries. The Nazis think that the world is divided into races. The communists believe the world is divided into classes. And a large part of the Muslim population see it as Muslims against non-Muslims or the infidels. So the fact that religion plays such a small role or no role at all in Western society, together with the fact that it plays the main role in Muslim society, goes some way to explaining the lack of understanding. But the main reason why you find it hard to truly understand the values and priorities of Muslim society is that you have a completely different mindset. Let me show you what I mean by asking a few simple questions. Let's say that you are a Catholic in Brazil, in Italy, in Wisconsin, in the Philippines, in Spain. And my question to you is this. Why did you stop killing Protestants? 400 years ago, you were at each other's throat, like literally. Why did you stop killing them? They still don't believe in the Pope. They don't think Mary is that important. Why did you stop killing them? Here is another question. Let's say that you are from the UK or France or Germany. Why did you stop killing each other? You were so good at it for so many centuries. Germans, I've been to Alsace-Lorraine and it is beautiful there. Are you sure you don't want it back? Something amazing has happened in the West over the last decades. Sadly, we take this huge achievement for granted. The fact that Catholics and Protestants aren't killing each other anymore and that no one can imagine a war between France and Germany is a bit like a miracle. In our Western minds, we all want peace and quiet and we mind our own business. Do you want to go to church on Sunday morning? Right. Do you want to go to a mosque or a synagogue? Do you want to stay home and listen to Led Zeppelin? Also great. This way of thinking seems to us so fundamental that not only do we take it for granted, but we think that the whole world share the same way of thinking. Sadly, this is not true, especially not of Muslim society. So when a person with a Western mindset try to understand Muslim society, he or she tends to use the wrong key to decode it. In my videos, I often talk about the civil war in Syria, and I do that for two reasons. The first is to show the hypocrisy of the Muslim world and the progressives. They are outraged by the brutal occupation of the West Bank. But half a million dead in Syria? Oh, that's a tragedy, you know. But what can we, what can we do? But the second reason I mention it so often is to point out that they are doing it to each other. It is not just a case of the brutal Assad regime and their supporters fighting against the 
freedom-loving democracy and human rights advocating resistance. There are so many Islamist groups and each is worse than the other. For years I've been saying, if this is what they do to each other, what will they do to us if they get the chance? Now, if it was only happening in Syria, you might say, okay, it's the exception. But look at Yemen. There is a terrible war going on there. It received no media coverage, but it is about 100 times worse than the Israel-Hamas conflict. Take, take the Gulf War. Do you know how many Iraqis were killed in that war? About 30,000. Before that, there was a war between Iraq and Iran in which a million people died. I can give you plenty more examples of Muslims killing hundreds of thousands of other Muslims in recent years. But the focus here is not the high level of violence in Muslim society, but rather the West's wishful blindness to it. Another example is the Arab Spring media coverage. The Western media were thrilled about it at first. They were pushing the idea that all Muslim countries would soon be democratic. But as the Arab Spring turned into a Muslim winter and into chaos and war between different Islamic groups, suddenly the Western media started shifting towards other topics. No one stopped and asked why it was that they had failed to create a democracy with human rights. Western media does everything it can not to talk about the obvious fact that Muslim society is so much more violent in every aspect, both in Muslim countries and in Europe. Look at this report from just a few days ago. Huge risk of Christmas attack warns EU. So the war between Israel and Hamas raises the risk of Christmas attacks. Who, who will attack? Is it like 50-50? Maybe a Jew and maybe a Muslim? There were so many news reports on this. The BBC, Euronews, AP, ABC News. And apparently none of them had a clue. Maybe a Jew will drive a truck into a Christmas market in Germany or France. Maybe gangs of Jews will sexually harass German women at New Year's Eve parties in German cities. A few days before this report was published, there was a terror attack next to the Eiffel Tower. Look at all the main headlines. I wonder if the attacker was a Jew or a Hindu or maybe even a Christian. I can't think of any other option. The mindset of the West cherishes human life, democracy, and personal liberties. This is why Catholics and Protestants don't kill each other, even though they have a different perspective on the church. And this is why the border between France and Germany is now open. In Muslim society, things are very different. The levels of violence are way, way higher. Violence between Sunni and Shia Muslims, violence between different Islamic groups, violence towards women and violence towards minorities. How do we deal with this problem? The first step is to acknowledge that there is a problem and not try to swipe it under the carpet. There were many, many appalling images that came out of the October 7th attack. One of them involved an Israeli woman who had been taken prisoner. There is a video of her in Gaza she has blood all over her pants and hundreds of Palestinians are cheering all around her and shouting Allah Akbar, God, God is great. Ordinary Palestinians on the street are celebrating as a bleeding, terrified girl is brutally manhandled into a car. As horrific as it was, I wasn't surprised. You shouldn't be surprised either. And if you were surprised, it is time to wake up the sooner the better. Don't agree with me? Prove me wrong. Write to me and tell me about terror attacks carried out by Jews in Europe. Send me photos of Jews rioting in France. There are half a million Israelis in the US. Show me an Israeli tearing down an American flag. Send me a video about a new church opening in Saudi Arabia. But please don't call me names just because you don't like what I say. Next week, I will be uploading a video about the life and identity of Jesus. So subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I publish it. If you think my videos are important, then please share them and consider supporting me on Coffee. The link is here below. See you next week. Yalla bye.